Good Monday morning. Let's take a look at what we've lined up for you on today's show. Today, Dr. Dan Tonson's guest is Dr. Maria Ferrer, a clinical associate professor in the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine and a leader of the Equine Theria Genealogy Service there. They'll be discussing equine fertility issues, learn about the diagnosis and treatment of infertility in horses. Stay tuned for all this and more after the break. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Stop by or visit us at sftmeats.com. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk and Dr. Ferrer, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here and uh, uh, sure appreciate all that you do for everybody here at the Veterin College of Veterinary Medicine. You do a lot of things with teaching and with clinical service and, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. I <laughs> enjoy what I do. I love the contact with students and clients and, and the opportunity to do research here also. Well, it's, so. it's, it's obvious that you do love it. <laughs> and, and folks, uh, Dr. Ferrer is a clinical associate professor here in the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. She's also boarded in the American College of Theriogenology, and that means what? Reproduction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you deal with, with reproduction of all species, mm -hmm. but what we're going to focus on today is, is, are the horses. Mm -hmm. And so let's jump right in and just kind of talk a little bit about equine reproduction and, and some of the general uh, cycles and seasons and different things to that nature. Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the um, main reasons sometimes for um, failure of mares to become pregnant is a lack of understanding of their cyclicity and, and when they need to be bred and what's going on with them. Um, people, it's important that they realize that mares have seasonality, mm -hmm. so they will not cycle year-round. Um, they start coming into heat around this time of the year, February, March. They will start having some activity in their ovaries, and they will show signs of estrus. They will stand for the stallion. It looks like they're cycling, but they're really not ovulating. Okay. So a lot of frustration comes from breedings that happen at this time of the year in mares that will stand but will not ovulate, and therefore, you know, there's no embryo. So they'll, they'll, uh, they'll stand to be bred, mm -hmm. but since they're not ovulating, Nothing no, nothing's getting bred. Right. right. Got to um, have the ovulation. Right. So the first ovulation of the year usually happens around April, first week of April, and that's when fertile breedings will happen. Um, mares will continue to cycle or ovulate every 21 days until October, November, when they go out of heat. Um, that is what we call the natural breeding season. Um, it's important that you understand also that some breed registries will have an artificial breeding season, mm -hmm. and all the foals, like thoroughbreds, for example, um, all the horses will turn one year old on January the 1st. So um, there is an advantage on foals being born early in the year, you know, for yeah. competitions. How long is so the gestation? It's about 340 days on average. It ranges between 320 and 360 sometimes. So 11 months? Year. About 11 months is the average, yes. It's a pretty long gestation. It's pretty long gestation, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's the reason, you know, the goal is to have your foals when um, you have um, good grass, so therefore they need to be bred in the spring so they can have their foals in the next spring you bet. when they have good conditions. Great information. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to continue with Dr. Ferrer. We're going to talk more about infertility issues in horses and breeding cycles. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us today. Golf Week calls it the best course you can play in Kansas. But once you play, you'll want to stay. Go for it. Firekeeper Golf Course at Prairie Band Casino and Resort is just north of Topeka off Highway 75. Our stay and play package is worth the trip. Luxury hotel room, green fees, and golf cart for two, starting at just $169. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center, 
and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Get ready for the Kicker Country Stampede presented by Verizon Wireless. Starring Jason Aldean. Laptist Ray Atkins. Four days of camping and country music at Country Stampede. Little Big Town. The Pistol Annies featuring Ashley Monroe, Miranda Lambert, and Angelina Presley. Country Stampede. Take advantage of our current pricing. Use Easy Pay to split up your payments. Save money through April 30th with early bird pricing. More info at CountrySTampede.com. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by Kansas Pork Association, assisting producers and informing consumers. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Maria Ferrer and she is a board certified theriogenologist which means she specializes in, in reproduction. She's a clinical associate professor here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and we're just tickled to death to have you here on the show. Thank you. We've been talking about the equine reproduction and the season uh, surrounding uh, equine therio. And, and so, you know, there's, there comes a point in time where we have to be able to determine are our mares bred or are they not bred? And what's kind of the protocol or, or suggestion? I know that we always recommend that you work with your local veterinarian. Right. But what are some of the general things if I was bringing my mare into your veterinary clinic that you would want to do throughout that breeding season? Well, there are um, multiple ways in which infertility can um, manifest, I guess, or you can identify it. Um, certainly, there are mares that will be infertile because they're not cycling normally. Mm -hmm. So if you're following the estrocycle cycle of your mares, you'll know that she'll be in heat for a week and then she'll be out of heat for two weeks and will come back into heat later. If there are irregularities in those cycles, then that would be one reason to call your vet and find out what's going on with that mare. Um, if the mare is cycling normally and she has been bred, um, the mare, if she's pregnant, she will not come back into heat gotcha. two weeks later, so she will remain out of heat. Um, there's no guarantee that she's pregnant. There are some conditions that will result in lack of um, you know, cyclicity, so that's why we recommend having your vet ultrasound your mare. Okay. And the best time for diagnosis is about 14, 16 days from ovulation um, because you know she's pregnant and you know she has twins or not. And if she has twins, there's something we can do at that point. Um, so let's back up. Yes. So 14 to 16 days uh, after ovulation. ovulation is when you want to have them ultrasound. That's pretty exactly. quick. It is pretty quick, and, and you know, you can see the embryo as early as day nine. Oh my goodness. ovulation with a ultrasound. Um, but 14, 16 days, that's the time when, if the mare is not pregnant, she would be coming back into heat. So if you have your early diagnosis, you can plan ahead to breathe her in the next cycle. And what, what uh, the problem with twins? Um, twins, you know, the, the, she, because of the placentation, that the mare has, mm -hmm. that placenta needs contact with the entire uterus to support a pregnancy. If you have two in there, they're competing for, for that space. Gotcha. Um, so most of the time, one of the embryos will not make it. Um, if they make it to term, you'll have um, foals that would be very weak and do not strive and do not do properly. So twins, it, it sounds cute, but it's not usually a good thing, you know, right. for horses. 
Um, so there are ways to reduce in that pregnancy if she is 14, 16 days from ovulation and make sure that one embryo makes it to term safely for baby and for mom. Wow. Um, so, but, you know, usually um, if the mare has been bred for two cycles, we usually have on average about 60% conception rate per cycle. Uh, it can change depending on the mare. But after two cycles, if she's not pregnant, then you want to have your vet check your mare and see what's going on, why. Why is not? That's great. When we come back, we're going to continue with Dr. Ferrer and talk about maybe some of those reasons why your mare's not bred. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Get ready for the Kicker Country Stampede presented by Verizon Wireless, starring Jason Aldean, Landis Ray Atkins. Four days of camping and country music at Country Stampede. Little Big Town. The Pistol Annies featuring Ashley Monroe, Miranda Lambert, and Angelina Presley. Country Stampede. Take advantage of our current pricing. Use Easy Pay to split up your payments. Save money through April 30th with early bird pricing. More info at CountrySampede.com. Now, another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Early spring is the best time to plant many of the cool season garden vegetables for your dinner table, finishing in just 4 to 12 weeks. Plant homegrown cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, and onion plants in your garden or container. Homegrown, hardy, and healthy plants are now available at Jackson. Use Fertilome Gardener Special Fertilizer for your garden or Fertilone Blooming and Rooting Water Soluble for your containers for best production. Purple Wave is a proud supporter of the Kansas FFA through the Bid for Blue program. Purple Wave donates a portion of the proceeds earned on certain ag assets to the Kansas FFA. Winning bidders can designate a Kansas chapter to receive the donation. To date, Purple Wave is proud to have donated over $10,000. Visit purplewave.com to learn more and to place bids on Bid for Blue assets. Purple Wave Auction. Straight. Simple. Sold. We've been using the multi-men on our donor cows, and after we started using it on them, we've seen a definite increase in grade number one embryos. I like the results that I get using multi-men with the uh, AI conception rate. Their mineral's not up to snuff, you're gonna have problems, and I definitely think multi-men is good for, you know, general healthiness of the cattle. We think multi-men more than pays for itself. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Maria Ferrer. We both work here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And Dr. Ferrer is a boarded theriogenologist and studies reproduction of many species, but today we're talking about equine. And, and so we get out to that 60 days or the two services and 60 days post-breeding season and, and the mares are open and now I bring my mare into your veterinary clinic. What are some of the things that we need to take a look at or, or what are some of the things that you're going to um, investigate to figure out why she's not fertile? We are going to do what we call a breeding soundness exam. Okay. So uh, we're going to get a complete history for that mare. So it's important that the client comes in if you have reading records that you bring them so that we can go through them. 
Uh, it tells a lot on what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a complete physical exam on the mare um, to see if there are any systemic conditions that are affecting her that may affect um, fertility. And then we're going to start by looking at, for example, the conformation of the vulva of that mare. Um, if you look at um, the position of the vulva, it's a highly contaminated place or fecal contamination right. on that skin. Um, so we need to make sure the vulva has a good seal so that air and feces do not go into the uterus and cause an infection. Um, if the conformation is not correct, there are surgeries that we can do to you fix that You can do problem. some sort yes. of, uh, you know, is it the tilt, the angle? It's both. It's the tilt and how, what percentage of that vulva is above the pelvic rim. Gotcha. So you want two-thirds below the pelvic rim, and you want that vulva to be straight. If it's not, then that predisposes the mare to infections. Okay. Um, when they defecate. Yeah, when they defecate, and even when they race and when they train, you know, there's so much negative pressure within the abdomen that that sucks air in, and with the air goes... And the, the, the wind sucker the, right. syndrome. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, and, but even when the vulva is correct, you know, during um, breathing or insemination, you're penetrating through all the physical barriers, going straight into the uterus and putting potentially bacteria into that uterus and causing, um, you know, an infection. So you want to ultrasound the mare. We're going to ultrasound her see if there is any fluid in the uterus, any signs of infection. We are going to take a sample um, from the endometrium to see if there are cells in there that would indicate infection or inflammation. Gotcha. And we're going to take a swab to do a culture and see if there is anything growing, any bacterium um, growing that could be causing the problem. Um, the most common cause of infertility in mares is endometritis, which is an inflammation or an infection of the uterus. Um, we are going to be um, doing a vaginoscopy. So we look at the interior of the genital tract directly with a speculum to see also if there are any lacerations, any um, exudate, any discharge, any sign of inflammation. Um, sometimes there are anatomical problems that can be fixed that, that would predispose a mare to problems. Um, so that's good. It's, uh, you know, so basically we're going to be looking to see if we have an infection or we have some mm -hmm. physical abnormality that's, that's causing this. Right, exactly. When we come back, we're going to discuss this more with Dr. Ferrer. You're watching Doc Talk. We're talking about equine reproduction. We're glad that you joined us. Roy Fry Western Lifestyles brings the cowboy or cowgirl out in all of us. With a huge selection of must-have items, it doesn't matter if you're shopping for your horse, picking up some Western accessories to add that rustic charm to your home, or simply treating yourself. The knowledge and expertise to dress you your Western best is right here at Roy Fry Western Lifestyles, Highway 24 and Kansas Avenue in Topeka. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. I'm Dennis Tebow. My wife and I, Kathy, are the owners of Wolf Creek Cattle Company. We have grown to approximately 70 bulls. I'm Reese Arnold. I'm the livestock manager at Wolf Creek Cattle Company. You know, these are not just like normal cattle. These cattle, they're hauled anywhere from, you know, eight to 10 hours a day across the United States and asked to perform. Multi-man 90 keeps them kind of level. It maintains and balances their system. The stress level is less when, you know, when everything's right and working right, then they're working right. Tar Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, 
growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by Purple Wave Auction. Straight, simple, sold. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine with my colleague, Dr. Maria Ferrer, who is a boarded theriogenologist and a clinical associate professor here at Kansas State University's Veterinary Health Center. And we've been talking about fertility and infertility of mares and we got to the endometritis and, and we know some of the causes, anatomical uh, issues, but, but what do we do now to treat, what, what are, what's the veterinarian going to do to treat endometritis? Um, so endometritis is a bacterial infection, as any infection will treat this with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, we want to treat the mare when she's in heat because her defenses, uh, defense mechanisms are working at the best. So, and blood supply and... Yeah, and, and the function of the inflammatory cells and, gotcha. and, you know. So we're going to treat the mare locally. We do infusions of the um, antibiotics into the uterus for three to five days, once a day. Yep. Um, and we're going to remove any debris with, with lavages of that uterus to make sure we clean it out properly. Um, if there are any anatomical problems that are predisposing the mare to endometritis, we're going to fix it um, by doing surgery if we have to. Um, and then, you know, m most of these mares will develop endometritis after they're bred or inseminated. Yep. So the fact that they are clean before insemination doesn't mean they will remain clean. So a big part of the treatment of endometritis is proper management of the mare at the time of breeding. Okay, um, so that's what I was going to get at. Is mm -hmm. okay, we, we we're going to treat through lavage and, and 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 antibiotics and things of that nature. But what's your bullet point for uh, prevention? So, so the main thing is is minimizing bacterial contamination and inv invasion of that uterus. You know, the mare needs to be breathed ideally only once on that cycle, mm -hmm. um, using strict cleanliness and hygienic, you know, procedures. So. The best thing you can do to prevent problems and endometritis is to have a vet that is um, versed in breeding management of horses that can help you, um, you know, minimize that uterine invasion at breeding. At the you bet. Breeding so just that. making sure that you have somebody on site, specifically a veterinarian, that's going to be able to help maintain a clean field. When, you're, when these mares are being bred. Right, and breed them at the right time, you know. A yep. normal mare may be okay if you breed them every other day for three days until she goes out of heat, but a problem mare, every time you breed her, you're causing more and more inflammation. Right, so it's important and that more you, chance of an infection. Right, right. So it's important that, you know, you have your vet ultrasound that mare to tell you exactly what day she needs to be bred. Breed her once. And then we're probably going to also do treatments after breeding to make sure we clean her properly. So we're going to flush her uterus six hours after insemination, make sure that she cleans out properly. Perfect. Man, it was great to have you on the show. Thank you. Appreciate I enjoyed you. it. <laughs> it's great. And we appreciate you watching the show. Remember, we always recommend that you work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Ferrer and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can always go to the web and find us at www.vet.ksu. Edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk today. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. We'll have lots more for you tomorrow on Ag AM in Kansas. We're here every weekday, same time, same station or look for us on the web at agamincansas.com. Eric Atkinson here from K-State Research and Extension.